Live from sunny downtown Seattle at Cloud Fair 2012. I'm Barton George. I'm here with Bob Sayer. Bob, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So you are the CTO of Redap. Um, first, if f folks aren't uh, familiar, what is Redap? Redap is a hardware value-added reseller. We've been in the business for about 16 years. We sell primarily data center equipment, and the data center typically today means not just the hardware, compute storage, networking, but it means cloud. So today we're in the business of selling building, configuring, shipping, manage private clouds for customers. Cool. And now you have an interesting background. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you did prior to Redap. I'm a software guy by trade. Uh, I uh, built a software company called Parlano, which had a product called Mindaline, which was group chat. So it was all about group communications in real time. And uh, we had a lot of fun selling to banks and had people run their trading operations, communicating across a bunch of geographies on our stuff. And uh, eventually struck up a partnership with Microsoft, who decided they wanted it, and they acquired the company. So I ended up at Microsoft for a little while after that. And then uh, that's what brought me out to Seattle, and then I ended up at Redapt. So as you mentioned, Redapt's a hardware bar. So what's a software guy doing there? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I wondered that myself when I first got there. And, uh, and you no, know, but I, I, DevOps today is, is about software. We're taking... Uh, hardware, which in a lot of ways can be thought of as a commodity. I mean, you still need it to work, and so it's not full commodity, but software is what makes it tick. And when you think about building managed private clouds at scale, you, you need software people to do that. You need software to run on top of it. You need automation to be written to, uh, to do all the configurations in a standardized way. And that stuff is all, uh, you know, Chef is all written in Ruby, and it's all software. So, so DevOps to me is actually very consistent with my software background. And just out of curiosity, what what languages do you usually work in, or have you worked in? Uh, you know, I started out in the C, C++ days, transitioned into Java, uh, did a bunch of C sharp work when we were partnering with Microsoft, and then when I was at Microsoft, that was all either C um, or managed code in C++. And then uh, did a stint on my own after that to um, build some affiliate marketing sites, and that was all Ruby on Rails, which happened to be pretty good because, again, uh, most of the chef stuff is, is Ruby. So uh, that's my favorite language today, and I like Rails as a platform. Oh, cool. So um, we just got off stage a little while ago, and you did the, as I said, I did the, the setup, and you did the meat of it. Can you talk a little bit about what we were, uh, some of the points that you were making in the in the private versus public cloud chat? Yeah, yeah I mean, we we see a lot of customers today come from, building up their infrastructure in Amazon. And so they, they go from you know, one or two developers to 15 or 20 developers, and they have their entire infrastructure in Amazon, and then all of a sudden they realize, whoa, I'm spending 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars a month at Amazon, and my finance guys don't like that anymore. But they typically don't have any operations staff, and, or maybe they have one person who, who manages essentially everything, including their email systems. And so what, what we have is an ROI model where we can take one of those customers, analyze their Amazon bill, figure out how many EC2 compute instances they have, figure out what kind of instances they're running, and build an equivalent hardware infrastructure delivered as a rack or a set of racks that have everything they need in it to run a private cloud, including the virtualization, the hypervisor software, and the cloud orchestration layer. So what they'll get is essentially wheeled into their data center or whatever data center they pick, something that's a racked piece of equipment that they can plug in and then they can bring it online and interact with it the same way they interact with Amazon. And so what we are talking about today is, is how do you make that transition and what's the ROI, uh, I guess, uh, turning point between is it more expensive to run an Amazon versus a private cloud or when does a private cloud become uh, more effective from an ROI standpoint? Yeah, and that was a pretty interesting chart and, and, and graph you made. Um, and you had, I think, three main use cases, mm -hmm. financial, gaming, and social. social. Mm -hmm. And so is that just based on anecdotal information, or how did you put that together? We, those were based on three customer examples. So okay. we had uh, a, a social, uh, social networking company come to us, and they, they handed us their Amazon bill, and we did the analysis, and that, that was based on that. And I think that they were, they were spending around... Um, I think that one was at $75,000 a month at Amazon, and, uh, and they were using M1 large instances at Amazon. They thought they were more uh, sort of data and I.O. constrained, and we, we showed them an equivalent infrastructure that would um, give them a positive ROI payback in about 15 months. And, and that was based on 
their infrastructure requiring probably three racks of equipment, um, around 60 to 65 compute nodes. And, uh, and, and if you include all the data center cost as well as someone to manage the equipment and the purchase of all the equipment, they'd still have a payout in 15 months. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob Sayer, thank you so much. Can you, uh, can you take us out now? Absolutely. Oh, I got to start over. Bob Sayer, thank you so much. Thank you.